Hi guys, welcome to Power Driven Diesel YouTube. Today we're gonna go over swapping out a 47RE in one of these second gen Dodge transmissions. What? Second gen Dodge trucks. Brian, I know I'm gonna, if I keep going, you're gonna use that shot. So we're gonna start over. <laughs> Howdy guys, welcome. This is Meyer at Power Driven Diesel. Today we're gonna go over swapping out the 47RE transmission in this second gen Dodge. So this old unit, it's, uh, it's it has plenty of miles on it. It's, it's definitely seen a better day. We're gonna swap it out with one of our performance units. Obviously we're doing this on a lift. You probably won't be as fortunate. Uh, you'll be doing it on the ground. So same thing stuff applies. Obviously it just makes it a little easier getting in and out from under the truck when you're on your two feet and you're not crawling around. But it's nice because we can get a little bit better at camera angles and stuff and be able to show you what's going on. But same tips or tricks apply whether you're on, in the air or on the ground. So let's get to it. Have you guys ever called into a diesel shop only to be met with somebody who didn't really want to take the time to talk to you? Here at Power Driven Diesel, we have guys whose only job it is is to talk to customers, talk to people to make sure they get the right parts for their truck the first time. We want to make sure your experience in buying diesel parts doesn't suck. We want it to be awesome. Give us a call. We want to talk to you. So first off, we're gonna start off with the skid plate. It's just four 15 millimeter nuts here, here, and here, and here. So we'll buzz that off here really quick. Now we're gonna get the drive shaft bolts off. These guys are a 516, so like an M8 um, head. You'll wanna be really careful with these because they can get seized in there and you're gonna round it off. So I like to use a nice impact socket, a six point, don't try using a 12 point on it. And just make sure you're going really straight and if it starts to, if it doesn't seem like it wants to come out, uh, use heat, that is your best bet. Because trying to get them out once they're rounded off is quite, quite a fun task. There you go. Perfect. This one has the um, rear you know, center support bearing for the drive shaft. So we're going to have to buzz that off. There's a couple different, uh, depending on your year, your bolts will be a little different. These, this guy is a 15 millimeter nut and a 15 millimeter bolt on the top. So you'll have to hold that guy. Sometimes they are a um, 16 millimeter um, head and bolt or nut and bolt. So you just have to kind of figure out what you have and pull it off. Now this actually isn't too hard of a job when you're on the ground, but when you're in the air, we're gonna grab a helper here really quick, pulling this drive shaft down. So we called Nick over here. Okay, just kind of hold it. Let's make sure that doesn't grab your arm on the way down. It's quite fun. Okay, we'll just set this to the side. Now we're gonna to move to the front drive shaft. Now these guys here, most of the times they're a 3 8 sometimes they're also a 5 16 but they are a 3 8 for us. Okay, time to drain oil. Because Dodge, in their wisdom, did not give us an oil drain plug from the factory, um, we just kind of have to remove the pan and hope for the best, try to contain the, the mess as best as we can. So I'll kind of show you the technique I use, um, see if we can get this to happen without a huge, without a, a oil spill. So um, your, your oil pan bolts are a half inch. If that is, if your bolts are factory, if they're not, um, a lot of pans come with like, it's a, either an M6 bolt or M6 head threaded or head hex bolt or a quarter inch, but like I say, factory is gonna be half inch hex. So what I'll do is I'll go around and remove all, all the bolts except for two in the front and two in the back. Once that's done, what we'll do is we'll end up loosening up the, the rear bolts and letting the pan just kind of sag down a little bit to help drain, start that draining process. Here we go. Then in the effort of trying not to get the tool super oily, we're just gonna put a little wobbly on that and kind of loosen those bolts up a little bit more. I'll take that one completely out and I'll just loosen up this guy here. Actually, we're gonna take it all the way out as well because it's not quite, it's not making a landslide. From here, we're gonna loosen up the back ones and that's when it'll start dumping a little bit more fluid. that. OK, 
Okay. So we got the pan is about say about half drained. It's below the 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 the, the brim of the pan. So what we can do now is we'll just hold the pan up, remove the bolts, and then drop it down kind of carefully, and hopefully it works as well as that sounded. Okay, worked out pretty well. While this is draining, it's gonna sit here and drain for a while. Um, we are going to do cooler lines, stuff like that, while we have it, the pan sitting here. If that stuff's gonna drop a little bit of fluid, we can let it sit and drain into the same pan as well. Okay, we're gonna remove the lines. It's a, it's like a, it's kind of a, it's like an in-between size for the cooler line for some reason. It's like a little bit bigger or, a little bit bigger than a 7 8 a little bit smaller than a 15 16 So I use a 15 16 so it works okay as a backer. And then um, it is a 3 quarters on the line itself to loosen it up. Okay, now we're going to get this, the front one. Same story on this guy. Access is, is limited, but you can get her. So now we're gonna get all the plugs and linkages and stuff off the side of the transmission as well. Start off with this guy here. The little transfer case connector. Tells it it's actually a speed sensor. That's actually not the transfer case, that's the speed sensor. So now we got the neutral indicator. This guy just pops right off. There's no clip or anything. Pops it off. And it actually goes, when you put it goes back on, it goes either way. So in case you guys are wondering, we got a connector up here. It's got two tabs on the side that you kind of have to pinch and pull up and wiggle. That one wasn't too bad. Sometimes you've got mud in there and it doesn't want to come off. Sometimes you just got to sit, stick an air gun up there, try to blow it out a little bit and try again. But now we're going to get uh, the linkages here. So we got pinch bolts holding the linkages on. So what I want to do is get a hand up in there. Start loosening off those pinch bolts. There we go, that one comes off. Ah, the spring that disconnects it, it can sit out of the way. Then we get the next one. And if they're, you're not supposed to have to hold the nut, sometimes the nut on the backside does spin. So if you feel like you're spinning it forever, nothing's happening, watch that nut, make sure you're actually getting anywhere. You might have to grab a second wrench, which in that case, <laughs> that gets pretty fun. Okay, and then we just got a 916th bolt right here holding the TV cable to the trans. That's a lot tighter than that. Okay, one last bracket. It's just a 96, or it's actually an 18 millimeter nut um, that holds the, sh the shift linkage to the side of the trans here. So this guy, lots of extension, 18 mil deep. Just pop it up in there. and it all just kind of falls down. So because of the way the, sh the shift rod works, um, it pivots over here on the frame, it mounts to the frame, and then it goes over to the trans and mounts there and then pivots there as well. So because that rod's kind of coming over, it gets in the way when you're trying to pull that transmission back out. So what I like to do is I'll actually mount, dismount it from the frame side as well. That way I can kind of scoot it over a little bit and kind of get it out of the way for pulling it out. It's not completely necessary, it just makes the rest of the, the uninstall a little bit easier. Put some vacuum lines on the on the transfer case here. Sometimes they can kind of be pinched between the top of the transfer case and the floor, so you have to actually let the trans down a little bit before you can get it out. This guy's not too bad, so we can just pop him off. It's just one of those things you gotta sit there, wiggle it, and eventually it'll come off. Just like that. Now we're just gonna get the transfer case mount off the side of the transmission. It's just two five eighths inch bolts, so we're gonna we're gonna pull that off really quick. It's kind of tight with the cab, so ratchet here. So now we're just gonna pop the linkage off the transfer case. It's just a rubber grommet, so we're just gonna pop it out with some, a pry bar. There we go. Just pop that off like that. Now it's been draining long enough, so we're gonna put that pan back on. 
just j just a couple bolts just to hold it on so we can uh, use the trans jack and you know obviously jack against the pan. So now we got the transmission jack underneath it. We're gonna what? We'll try that again. Now we got the transmission jack under it. We're going to go ahead and start removing the cross member. So first off, two 13 millimeter, or two 15 millimeter nuts uh, hold the trans mount to the cross member. Now we're going to get the cross member out of here. So it is in factory form. It is 15 millimeter nuts inside the frame and 13 millimeter headed bolts on the inside here. So. It's kind of just one of those things you just kind of have to fish, uh, just kind of pull the socket off or pull the nut off and then more than likely fish it out from inside the frame. They give you a big old hole here to be able to stick your hand in or a magnet or anything. It's kind of just, it's kind of just a pain. Okay, now there is one small nice thing about the design of a second gen cross member is that you can just pull out all the bolts because the frame is kind of a wedge if you look at it it won't fall straight down in order to get the cross member out you actually have to go up a little bit and then bring it back so we're going to pull out all the bolts and that's not a concern there we go and that's all the bolts out of this guy so now there's two ways of doing this there's a there's the one method of just grabbing a very large hammer um, you'll want to remove the, the uh, transmission mount here and you're going to, like I say, beat it up and then beat it back. You're going to have to make sure you get around the, the uh, fuel lines and stuff there. Um, the other method is to grab either like a port of power or we have a little transmission jack or frame spreading jack that uh, we use to spread the frame just enough to you know, get the cross member to make it, get it to be where it's loose and that way it kind of just falls out. So we'll go ahead and just use that, the, the frame spreader, but a big hammer definitely works and lots of people have done it. You can see. There we go, up. Oh, we, ah, I definitely forgot something. Vacuum lines on the back of this cross member. I forget every time. It's just a little 10 millimeter. I'm gonna grab that. There we go. So like I say, so we go up and then down. Now we're going to remove the tr transmission mount from the actual trans. Two 15 millimeter bolts here. Gets this guy free. And then we're gonna switch to a 5 eighths. And this guy's just gonna fall right off there. So now we're gonna get your torque converter bolts. There's just six of them and you have to take off a little access panel with, held on by two 10 millimeter bolts in order to get at them. It's kind of a, a tight fit and all there. So I personally prefer to grab yourself a couple extensions and do all the work from the front of the truck. But, um, you know, to each his own, if you don't have extensions or wobblies or whatever, you can definitely get in there with a ratchet. It's just a little harder to do. So we'll go ahead and kind of get that ball rolling, pulling that access cover off. In order to do the torque converter bolts, we got to spin that engine around so we can get all of them all through a little access panel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and spin the crank over by the damper bolts. It's just a 15 millimeter uh, socket. Just if you put a shallow on there, you can get through past the radiator and everything. And we're going to... Go ahead and start spinning this thing over and watching for the bolts. Okay, last step, bell housing bolts. So it's gonna be eight bell housing bolts, they're 9 sixteenths. And I personally like to use a long extension to be able to get at them instead of trying to get up in the wiring and everything going on in there and try to get up close and personal. So that's my next step. If you were working on the ground, you probably would end up taking the transfer case off yourself uh, doing it separate because of the trans jack. In fact, we have a lift. We're just going to take this whole thing off as one assembly. But if you were to take the transfer case off separately right here, um, it's just a matter of six and nine sixteenths inch nuts. Uh, just get yourself a you know box end wrench and then just drop the trans down a little bit as much as you can. Get so you have as much ex access between the floor and the transmission and just go ahead and just pull all the nuts off, slide it off and just kind of belly it out or use some kind of a trans jack or something. But Anyway, for me, it's bell housing bolts.
those are tight bell housing bolts. Okay, well, maybe we can just drop her down, but we're gonna have to, we have to pull it back a little bit here and just kind of snake it all out past cooler lines, past all that stuff. Just like that, now we're gonna go down. Decrepit. Dude, this is nasty. Look at this. This is what we've been working with this whole time. It is amazing that those connectors came disconnected as easy as they did. We're gonna have to clean this thing up a little bit. So we're gonna we're gonna take a pause with the pressure washer and we'll be back. So right now I need to complain about how we had to close the bay door because it started raining, and that's why the lighting is bad. You're welcome. Thank you, nature. So we got the transmission out, but before we're even gonna think about putting this thing back in, there's a couple things we're gonna need to do. First of all, we're gonna blow out our cooler lines because when that old transmission failed, more than likely it sent a bunch of debris all, all through the cooler lines and you don't want all that debris in your new transmission. So we're gonna go ahead and blow that out. And then we're also gonna swap out that flex plate with a heavy duty unit because stock flex plates good to only about like 350 horsepower and then they rip the center out and then you get a lot, all sorts of kinds of issues. But let's get started on this. The setup for this is actually really easy. You can do it with a couple cans of brake clean and a couple half inch hoses and some fittings. So we took the stock fittings out of the transmission. We screwed that to our hard lines and then we just clamped some half inch hose around the other end of the fitting, made a kind of a, a fixture here to be able to blow air through this cooler and uh, put it into this bucket. And then we can watch what's coming out of the line and when it comes out, starts coming out clean, then we know we're good. So we're gonna go ahead and start here first off. Just gonna blow air. Let's go slow. It's full of fluid, so. So you can see that's pretty, pretty dark and nasty st looking. Not something we want to pump into our new trans. Still coming out pretty nasty. I'm so excited, can't, can't hide. Something about working on a 12 valve just makes me so happy. Okay, so we look at what we got coming out here. That's pretty darn clean. So we're good to go, no chunks, nothing. Should be good. So now we're swapping out the flex plate. That's just held on by eight 18 millimeter nut, uh, bolts. Hit it with a gun. Try not to fall, drop it on your face. Then you get this little ring here. Now when you put this ring in, you have to make sure you perfectly align it with the trash. We don't use it. So now we got a new flex plate. Let's go ahead and slap that guy up there. Make sure it's kind of aligned, get a couple of bolts started here. And just suck them down evenly. Just gonna use a dial locator and we are going to measure the run out of the flex plate. And we just go ahead and spin the crank. So we're just stopping next to each hole and seeing what it is. We're at about, about 10 thousandths here. That's about right. And honestly, anything less than like 18 is, is just fine. So this guy's good. Um, if there's more than 18, then you just wanna make sure that all these are even 
and that, you know, you got it in square and it's, it's not uh, an issue with how it's set on. And then if it's still a uneven, then you can use like a pry bar or something, kind of like flex it around trying to get down to below, like say below that 18 number. So now because we just threw those bolts in there dry and we didn't put anything on them, I'm going to take them out uh, four at a time, take them out, put some red Loctite on them and then buzz them back in that way they don't come loose in the future. Now, as far as the torque spec on these guys, I personally just use an impact and I know that if I hit it with this guy and they're not going to be coming loose just because, uh, because of how short the bolts are, they don't respond well to a torque wrench. Just in that like a thousand horsepower range where those these bolts really want to come loose on your lower horsepower say 650 and below um just hitting them with a torque wrench to like 110 foot pounds is the right way of doing it but like say when you start making thousand plus horsepower start spinning these things to 5k these bolts will come loose that's why we use the red loctite that's why we use the impact and that's why i just use that method on all the stuff i do so Okay, so flex plates in, cooler lines cleaned out, we're ready to get a trans start going in this thing. Quiet! Because Brian is paying the butt. I am. Okay. Action. Okay, we got a new transmission on the jack, ready to go. We did swap a couple things over, so like basic stuff, we got our transmission temperature sensor, we got our cooler lines, we got basically any kind of bracketry or anything that came off your old transmission on the ground, just go ahead and swap that onto your new one. We will be putting the torque converter in here and we'll be slapping the transfer case on here in a second. So before we throw the converter on the trans, we're gonna put a quart of fluid in there just so all the brag, uh, bearings, brags, all that stuff is happy in there. You get the overachievers that try to throw two quarts in. I'm not against it. It's just that it makes a mess when you throw it on the trans and a quart, one quart is just fine. Now the technique here is you're gonna look at the pump tanks on your converter and then you're gonna look at the pump tanks in the pump. When we send out these transmissions, we generally send them so they're straight up and down. So that's a pretty safe bet. I'm gonna go ahead and grab and cradle, cradle the converter and just kind of line it up. Kind of rock it back and forth. You definitely wanna support the converter as it goes in right there. You might have to fight a little bit, you might have to spin it a little bit, but you, the, the trick here is to really support the converter and don't let it hang off the input shaft as you're pushing it on because there's a seal in there you'll pop out. So we're just kind of shoot, kind of wiggling, jiggling, pushing it in. And you can see we're about three quarters of an inch from flush with the face of the bell housing. That's about right. You can also can't get your hands back there. That's your, that's your indication that this thing is fully set and it's ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna throw this transfer case on the transmission. Now, for a standard person, your general build, that's gonna be a pretty difficult task. Obviously, I'm pretty blessed, so I'm just gonna have these two guys do it. Don't worry, I'll just hold it. The general tech, oh dude, you guys make it way too easy. So the general technique there, you're just gonna have to get the output shaft lined up, get it splined, and then spin it to the studs line up and just slap it on and then hold it so it doesn't fall while you put a nut on it. If they hadn't done it so smoothly, you'd actually understand that it's kind of a little bit of a trick there. Okay, there you go. Just tightening those up, those six, nine sixteenths. Transfer case is mounted up, everything's ready to go, so let's get it onto the truck. So one thing I will note, and it's just a kind of a quick thing to make your life a little easier and possibly, obviously your hole that you go through to put the torque converter bolts in is right here behind the flex plate. And so these flex plates a lot of times have balance holes. So I'm just gonna note that the balance holes are up here. And so when I go to um, put the first bolt in, I know that if I just go up a little bit, I'm gonna hit this hole and I'm nowhere near the balance hole. Sometimes you accidentally be trying to get a hole bolt into the balance hole and it's just not quite lined up. It's just, you're gonna, I'm finding it. And well, that's why, because it's the wrong hole. We're good. A couple crunches here, all normal. Okay, looking at it, we're a little bit twisted. So we're gonna 
twist this transmission. I just go off of how high this hole is in comparison to the, the hole with the dowel. The same side, same thing on the other side. This is actually a really good thing to point out as well. So the adapter plate, the transmission face, uh, mating face, has two dowels, one on either side. So when you pulled your old transmission out, 99% of the time, they stay with the adapter plate. It's always very important to make sure that the adapter plate has those two dowels in it before you try to put your new one in. If you only have one dowel or you're missing both your dowels, that transmission won't be perfectly lined up and that will actually that will cause issues with leakage later as well as just imbalances and stuff like that. It'll, it'll inevitably cause, cause a problem that will end with the transmission having to come back out. Okay, a little bit of wiggling, a little bit of prodding. We got it to sit it's basically flush. We want to make sure we're, we're not um, pinching the converter when we tighten up these bolts. So we got it set up pretty well. We're going to, first of all, make sure that the converter spins easily underneath the trans, and then we're going to put a couple bolts in on either side, just kind of snug, and again, make sure that converter spins freely. If it, that converter's not seat, right, seated right, or it's not quite in the snout of the adapter plate or the, uh, the flex plate, then that's when you're gonna cause some damage when sucking those bolts up and possibly, you know, pinching something and bending something and distorting something and just, you know, not possibly having issues. Okay, it moves easily, so we're good. We got the, a couple bolts snug. The transmission's kind of seated where it's gonna sit. Again, we're gonna just make sure this converter's been, it spins freely. Absolutely it does. So you may not have seen it on the camera, but in the whole process of stabbing this transmission, getting some bolts started, stugging a couple down, putting a couple, you know, putting the four or five in here so it's more, you know, solid. I've probably checked it probably five, six times just to make sure we're not pinching anything because it's just like, as long as you get, make it to where that converter is spinning freely, that transmission really has to be seated correctly. So we're gonna go ahead, continue on with the install. Couple things to note with the dipsticks on these things. On these trucks, there's two different main styles. There's one that just has a groove in the dipstick that uses an O-ring to seal. And then there's one like this one here that uses a grommet. And so if you have the style with the grommet, just slip the grommet in the transmission, just give this guy a little bit of lube, just a little grease or an oil or something, and it will seal just fine. I haven't had any problem with this style. If you got the style with the O-ring, the o-ring is a pretty problematic when it comes to sealing up and so what i'll what we'll do is we'll just coat that thing with rtv or some kind of a sealant and shove it down in there and hope that it seals you want to just make sure you're lathered up nice and good um, otherwise you're probably gonna have some leakage issues down the road so this guy's got the grommet not a worry okay so now we're gonna do torque converter bolts. Um, I like to start off with torque converter bolts basically as soon as I can just because I do put red Loctite on it and I want that red Loctite to have as much time as possible to set up before we do a first fire just because I don't want these guys rattling out at all. So I use a long extension with like a, just a weak little driver to get them started and then we'll get them all started, back up, like button them down, bring it back about a turn or so, get them all going and then we'll go down and actually tighten them up. So on these lower horsepower trucks, I'll just use a torque wrench, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, on the higher horsepower trucks, again, where you're spending like over 5,000 RPM or so, I'll actually grab an impact and sneak it up in there with a shorter extension and hit these bolts with an impact, just because that really helps to seem to make it so they don't pop, come loose. Like say, it's a lot easier with just a, extend, a long extension in a torque wrench. So I'm gonna do that like this for this method. Transmission's in, torque converter bolts are in, bell hosing bolts are in. Now it's just a matter of just hooking up your general drive lines, you know, front and rear. We got a couple brackets to hook up, some couple connectors to hook up. We gotta put the cross member back in, which is what I'm about to do. And then it's just, you know, making sure everything is, that you disconnect and is reconnected and put fluid in it. Okay. So we are ready to go down with this truck. 
got everything installed, but before we do, we're gonna hook up a line pressure gauge in this thing. Anytime we do any kind of a new build or any drastic changes to any transmission here in the shop, we always hook a line pressure gauge up on there just so you can make sure that those line pressures are good and it'll serve you well you know, way down the road. Because if you have a line pressure issue, you can catch that and fix that before it causes any major damage in the trans. And honestly, even if your line pressure was just a little bit low, your transmission will drive just fine, it'll run just fine, but it may not last the same amount of time as it would if your line pressure was perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a gauge on here really quick. This is the line pressure port right here. We're just gonna pull this eighth inch MPT plug out, just a 7 16 then we're just going to throw that gauge fitting in there. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Hope you got that. We are now officially done. We're going to drop it down, put some fluid in it. Okay, fluid. Now we're just gonna top it off with some of our PDD transmission fluid. We're so, we're, so we're gonna start it off with about 12 quarts. Actually, that's a lie. 12 quarts would be if it was a deep pan. We're gonna do uh, eight quarts, and then we'll fire it up for 10 seconds, kind of start filling that converter, and then we'll put, start putting more fluid in it from there. Now we're gonna fire it up for 10 seconds. Levi! That was your cue. Obviously you're supposed to check this thing hot idling in neutral, but when you're first filling this thing up, it can give you a false reading where it's squirting fluid onto the stick, making it look like it's good on one side, but it's actually not. Anyway, point being, we're actually gonna check the fluid level of this thing without it running at all. And we're looking for it to be towards the S curve in that stick. So we just had it running, dipping it down. We're down below, right around there. So we can add about one quart to that thing and that's when we'll start checking it with it running in neutral because we just wanna make sure we're close with it not even running. So throw that one more cord in there, try it again. So I'm not sure if I'm getting a false reading here. It measures good on one side, but not on the other. So again, we're just gonna shut it off, check it with it not even running, because that way we know it's gonna be a much more solid reading. Okay, we do need to add a little bit more fluid, it looks like. These stock pans, because of the, their nature, they can be a little bit tricky to get just right. Okay, we're gonna add another probably three quarters of a quart and try again. In case you guys can't tell, I get a lot of calls with um, transmissions, you know, just having different shift issues or whatever, and a lot of the times, more times than you'd think, they just didn't check the fluid level quite right, and that just leads to all sorts of problems just with the transmission being underfilled. Okay. Okay. Fluid level looks good. We're a little bit on the high side, but once we drive this truck around and actually get all the air worked out of the coolers and the different clutch packs and stuff, I think it'll be just about perfect. So, I'm gonna take this thing for a test drive and we're gonna watch the pressures and see what they're doing. So, obviously in neutral, we're not gonna have any pressure there. Also, I apologize for the buzzing. This truck, the buzzer does never turns off. So you get to enjoy that whole, through the whole driving experience. But throwing it into drive, just at idle, we should be in the 80 to 90 PSI range thereabouts, depending on horsepower level. That's not drive. There we go. 90 PSI, so we're right there. Okay, let's take off. Giving it a little bit of throttle. Pressure goes up, 110. That's normal. And we're feeling the shift points. Yep, everything's working there. So you can see a pressure bump there. That was when we got into overdrive. 
So now we're cruising about 130 to perfectly normal. And then we're gonna, we're, we're gonna flat foot it here for a second and see what our pressure is. So right, that's right there, flat footed, 150, perfectly normal. Okay, so those are our pressures. We got 90 PSI, just idle and drive. Then we had about one, 110, 120, just cruising down the road at low speed. 130 locked up in, or in overdrive. And then we hit 150 uh, PSI with a flat footed. And this is a 485, so that is perfectly normal. If you start getting to like a 650 and higher, then you want to see, start seeing closer to like 160, 170, and 1,000 horsepower, 190, 200. But those number, these numbers here are perfectly normal on this 450 trans. So we'll be good to go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed following along, and we'll catch you in the next video.